Hello everybody, GameFreak9917 I'm back today with more Forza Horizon 2. I'm bringing you yet another car review. And today I'm going to be reviewing the base uh, C7 Chevrolet Corvette. And uh, as you know, it's known as the Stingray now. But this is a 2014 Corvette, so it's the newest one, obviously. <laughs> I'm totally butchering this, but fuck it, one take. Alright, but anyway, the, uh, if you guys play this game and you go through the engine swaps and you see a 6.2 liter V8, I believe that this is the one that it comes from, uh, because that is the Chevrolet engine. But anyway, this car makes 455 horsepower, producing 460 foot-pound torque, and it weighs 3,444 pounds. But it's a little bit in the middle between a heavy and a light car. But hopefully the 400 plus horsepower will help us. But let's take a look at our color scheme. Alright, so we have the sort of metallic gray. The same metallic gray with a white stripe. Red. Red with a white stripe. Red with a gray stripe. A metallic-ish red. Uh, that red with a white stripe, with a gray stripe, yellow, white stripe, gray stripe, green, white stripe, gray stripe, blue, white stripe, gray stripe, darker blue, white stripe, gray stripe. And I'm not going to go with the blue because there's an asshole that lives across from me that has a blue Corvette. The reason why I call him an asshole is because he always parks in a handicapped spot. He actually owns three vehicles and... Two of them take up the only two handicapped spots in that uh, section, or on that side. But I do like the red anyway on the uh, C7 more. Alright, so I'm not exactly sure what to expect from this car. Because the only C7 that I've actually driven is the, uh, the, uh, Z06. I think that's what the other one is. Very nice sound in the car. And I believe that this is naturally aspirated as well. I'm guessing for stock it's going to reach around the 180, 190s range. Something that really surprised me a lot with uh, a lot of the Chevys that I have used, other than like the uh, the Z28 Camaro, is they actually have really good grip. And uh, well, not so much grip, but more it's they're very good handling cars. And this car, I don't know, it turns very well, but it almost turns too well, if that makes any sense. Like, it's basically a missile, and it goes where you want it to go, but that's not exactly the best thing, because it's like I crank on my steering wheel, and then it almost throws me into a wall. But I must say, um, it has good brakes though. Completely stock, and it seems in third gear, keep it around maybe 5,000 RPMs, it's actually really good at cornering.
I had a little bit of a uh, smoky start, but I was able to catch after I maintained my RPMs. It's starting to rain, which is perfect. Just wouldn't be a car review if it didn't rain. I didn't even see what kind of car that was. And... Ooh, 175.22 across the line. So it's not exactly reaching my uh, guess of the 180, 190 mark. Although it was fairly close. But anyway, I'm pretty sure fully upgraded we're not going to be breaking a thousand horsepower just because that seems to be the trend with a lot of these Chevrolets is that they're not exactly breaking a thousand horsepower but they still handle fairly well uh, fully upgraded. Alright, so drivetrain, all-wheel drive, not going to do that. Aspiration, so yeah, there's a naturally aspirated twin turbo or a supercharger. Definitely going to definitely gotta go with the twin turbos. You know me. Alright, so just go ahead, put everything on that we can, just see how much horsepower we'll be making at in the end. Camshafts boost us up by 104 horsepower, was it? Yep. 104 horsepower, so camshaft is definitely doing its job by increasing the horsepower by quite a bit. But yeah, it looks like it's going to be stopping around the 800 some mark for horsepower, which is pretty common with a lot of the other Chevrolets. So 118 with the twin turbos at the intercooler making 928 horsepower which I think is actually a little bit more than some of the other Chevys if I remember correctly but 928 horsepower that's actually pretty good only 72 short of uh, 1000 Alright, weight reduction makes it pretty light, but should I put the roll cage in? I uh, might as well. It says that it helps the acceleration and launch. Whoops. Put the race transmission in. Okay, so with the race tires, race tires and all the upgrades, it's making 1.1 lateral G's. That's pretty good. Not going to be making 1.2, but that doesn't really bother me that much. Although, we do have some of these upgrades. Ooh, there are Hennessy upgrades as well. Put a Hennessy splitter on. Why not? A Hennessy wing. It was just carbon fiber replacing what was already there. And Hennessy side skirts, which I'm sure it's just more carbon fiber. So that's actually surprising. I thought all we were going to get was the Forza race wing and the splitter. Sounds a lot better. The turbos are a little bit harder to hear, but when you uh, rev them up to around seven, eight thousand RPMs, and then you let go, it, you can hear them. Uh, you can hear the blow off valve. Or not so much a blow off valve, just the sort of spooling, I guess, or despooling.
Okay, so there was some spin in second gear, and there was wanting to break loose in third gear. Breaking, very good. So yeah, and s uh, oh wait, I was actually in third gear there. So in third gear around corners, it even uh, oh man. So on gravel, not very good. Actually, in fourth gear, it's actually gripping a lot more, which is pretty good. Uh, I don't know what kind of car that was. Oh man, it spins quite a bit in third gear coming out of corners. That's uh, something that I don't like. In third gear, it will definitely spin on you if you uh, go straight on the gas. Oh, come on. can just slightly hear it idle. It's not the loudest though. But anyway, let's go ahead and just see how fast it is. Keep an eye on the uh, models pr on the speedometer on the left just to see how fast it climbs. Oh yeah, this car is fast. Come on, 230. 231.8 across the speed trap. That is very good. But speed and acceleration aren't everything when it comes to a race car. And that is where this car suffers. It has awesome brakes and it handles good, but the big thing about this, it's almost too much power. This car does not produce enough grip around and coming out of corners. It's only in fourth gear where you can be confident with using the gas. But in third gear and below, this car spins a little too much like just right there it didn't show that it spun but because it vibrates in the computer or not in the computer in the controller it vibrates when the car uh, will start to break loose when you hit the gas and that's what it was doing with the uh, with this Corvette and even there you could see some black uh, streaks being laid down that's not exactly good. You may be saying like, oh, but it's just in a straight line, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter until you try to overtake somebody. You go to press, you go to uh, pass them on the left side, on the right side, and that happens. You know? And in second gear, it's just completely out of control. It's definitely a car where you can only half throttle it most of the time and that's not something that I like so because of that as a track car I'm only going to give this a 5.5 .5 out of 10 but as a drag car this would be a I'd probably give it a 9 out of 10 for what it is like you can't really compare this kind of car to something like a McLaren F1 GT or anything like that. You know, it just would be fair. <clears throat> but anyway, as just a simple track car, I would only give this a 5.5 out of 10. And the main reason is it's seriously just grip. Everything else about this car, it's awesome. 
but grip just isn't there for me. But anyway, if you guys enjoyed the video, let me know in the comment section down below or just give the video a thumbs up. If you want to see more content from me and my friends when I record a thumb, make sure to hit the subscribe button. I'll be uploading daily. And I'd like to thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.